Welcome, Powerful Nonsensers. Hello. To another episode of the Powerful Nonsense Show. <laughs> uh, we've got an interesting one today. We do. Could be quite the challenge. I thought we'd do this based on you, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Um, speaking of dicks, <laughs> oh, God. this episode is about how to, to promote yourself without being a dick. Correct. That's that's what we're going with. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Should we intro ourselves? Let's though? intro ourselves. I think it feels yes. like an apt time. I'm Wayne Ingram. I'm Jim Yordis. And we're the Powerful Nonsense crew. How not to promote yourself like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might just like keep plugging like all episode and in a like really dickish way just to be like, that's how you don't do it. Yeah. For like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Um, so I think this is going to, could be quite a challenge for quite a few people because, no, 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 <laughs> that's oh highly, God, that's no, high. that's not what I meant. No, yeah. in the sense of like. That's highly offensive to our audience. <laughs> we're in a world where self-promotion is like. Available to everybody. Everywhere. Like even people that have no reason to necessarily self-promote will self-promote anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, even if they sometimes don't even know they're doing it. Even, yes, exactly. It's mm-hmm. such a subconscious thing that's happening in society these days. And so I feel like there could be some things that we might say that could be a bit of a challenge for people, maybe just food for thought, Mm -hmm. just to kind of go, oh, am I doing that? It's interesting, actually, that we're doing this episode today because I was listening to um, a podcast that I've brought up before. A friend of mine, Michael Bott, he's an actor, does uh, actors podcast. And he was talking about uh, basically the whole the episode was like, why do actors do what they do? It's look at me, look at me, look at me, Um, which was a quote from uh, Laurence Olivier, actually said that um and then he was talking about how social media and how actors are now using social media to to promote themselves could actually be very much of a distraction so it's really actually today i'm coming into this episode with kind of like a very slightly slightly different take on like self-promotion and social media because i've been very much involved as an actor of like social media and trying to work out how that can be used so yeah so my thoughts may be a little incoherent today be honest i think it's one of those episodes where i think we're both a bit not sure where it's going to go but mm-hmm. it's kind of i think that's the discussion we want to have because uh-huh. i think there is a lot of examples out there good and bad and we're going to decide maybe what is the right way to do it yes so where's a good place to start wing uh let me have a look see at our notes here uh <laughs> okay uh something that we've talked about um in the last episode about credibility and things and we were talking about leading with value and mm-hmm. things like that and I think that's a very good place to start with the whole self-promotion thing. I mm-hmm. think it's it's a very big difference maker for a lot of people with the self-promotion. And I think the people that you do want to be following and and consuming their stuff, it's usually the people that are leading with the value rather than the people that are going, look how great I am, look what I'm doing, look what I'm up to. Um, and I think, in fact, actually this came up uh, on the Ask Gary Vee show. Um, he was asked about the way he promotes his stuff and how it seems to have transitioned into a very Gary Vaynerchuk-centric, look at me, look what I'm doing. Um, But his argument actually was that actually, no, he if that's the way he's coming across, then he needs to address the way that he's promoting himself and that's not his intention. And actually his intention is very much about leading with value to the point that he says that with the way his whole marketing and everything's going at the moment and his self-promotion is going at the moment, he feels that actually he's in a stronger position than ever to provide value. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of hear your thoughts on that. Sorry, I kind of <laughs> went off on one a little Yeah, bit. I think the value thing is really important. I think nowadays we know that most, people atten- is it, most people's attention is on these social platforms and are so instantly the first thing we think to be on is like Twitter, Snapchat, mm-hmm. YouTube, put content out there and I think... Nowadays, it is one of those things where people feel that you have to be in every place all of the time. And I think the problem is as well, and I think I think it's becoming a bit more of a sort of buzz phrase, like you said there, even when we open it up, it's kind of, oh, lead with value, lead with value. I think it's true. Seth Godin um, wrote a blog post recently about this, and he's like, it's wrong when you're doing, when you're doing it because there's that deep part. It's, right. he, said, he said, you cannot hack recipe. Res- Reciprocity. You cannot hack it. And it's I feel truth. like we should get like a just a, a sound effect so every time you try to say it, we can just 
I just cannot say that word. Reciprocity. 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 So yeah, Seth Godin had a, a blog post on this, and he's like, you cannot hack it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem. It's I true. think nowadays it is this idea that everybody's saying all the time that if you want to kind of promote yourself and be out there, lead with value, lead with value. But I think sometimes then you get a bit too markety about it. Yes. And actually, it's interesting because I'm starting to see this a lot at the moment. Mm-hmm. Content marketing is now the mainstream form of marketing. Yeah. Whereas about four or five years ago, it wasn't the mainstream no. form. It was just coming into into being. And the more and more we're seeing it, the more and more the bullshit radar is tuning into content marketing for most people. Yeah. Um, I now know, I mean, maybe it's because I look at a lot of this stuff and, and, you know, I practice a lot of this stuff myself. Maybe that's partly to do with it. But I know now when I'm looking at stuff and I'm kind of going, I know why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. I know that it may appear here to be coming from a good place but i also know that the reason you're doing that is because it's almost that that paradox of like be more authentic Mm -hmm. and because you're you're trying to be more authentic you're being less authentic it's like then you try to hack authenticity right and i think one thing i want to kind of use an example for this point exactly is this idea that you've got like brands and sometimes i see adverts on tv like mcdonald's and i see coca-cola and as the video's starting i'm like wow this is a great advert like oh my god mm-hmm. and it's not literally till the end slide like that you realize oh it's a mcdonald's advert yes. or it's a coca-cola advert uh-huh. and i think the thing is here is that, that is whole, that good or bad it's bad in a way because what i think what is happening because we are saying lead with value or it's kind of this whole hacking content marketing it's like actually be authentic um like share your story like i think what's happening is a lot of these companies i know this may be going a little bit off topic but a lot of these companies are hiring like these psychologists who know how to Mm. get to people's hearts and we know nowadays that actually people buy because they care about the product we've got this whole scandal that tesco had been um branding all their um, fruit and vegetables. With this fictitious farm. Exactly. And so, amazing. again, it's this kind <laughs> of... Awful, but amazing. It's, it is, because it's that kind of idea that actually, maybe that's, people want to feel that their their produce has come from an authentic mm-hmm. place. It's a mm-hmm. farm, it's a little quaint farm, but it's a lie. And I think that's the difference. I think, Mark, like, like, like who is it? Who does it? Who is it that says that? Like, Mark, Mark has ruined everything. Gary Vee. And exactly, I think that's the problem. I think it's just that, nowadays this whole lead of value and he had his own book jab 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 mm-hmm. right hook and even he says it sometimes it's not about just maybe you have to do loads more jab it's 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 people are always looking at a way to hack that yeah. system of how things and you, are done you can't lead with value for the sake of leading with value mm-hmm. you I'm, can only lead with value if you have value to give um and i think uh, you know this is actually a mistake and i put my hands up it was a mistake i made with my production company um, as I was kind of discovering this content marketing thing and hearing this whole lead with value, lead with value, lead with value, give content, give content, give content. Mm-hmm. Uh, I led my company down this route and we completely lost our way for a while. We mm-hmm. completely lost our way for a while. We're only now in the last sort of 12 months really found, got ourselves back on track from that. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was hearing all this lead with value. And so it was right. Well, how can we provide value to an audience and actually in that respect, what we were trying, we had no value to, to offer, really. <laughs> it was, in hindsight, and completely unintentionally, mm. it was a bit of bollocks, <laughs> quite frankly. And and really, the value that we had to offer our audience were shows. And mm-hmm. we weren't putting out shows because we were putting out other content. And mm-hmm. it just... And, and so it's about finding, really understanding where your value really is and knowing that, you know, just because everybody's saying lead with value, that doesn't mean writing blog posts every yeah, week. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important. I think, obviously, nowadays, you do hear, and I think social media is so popular nowadays, so when it comes to promotion, everybody thinks, okay, go to those platforms. But mm-hmm. actually, when you look under the surface, there are so many other methods of self-promotion which are less dicky, which is sometimes not even seen in the social sphere. Yeah. Sometimes it is that word-of-mouth reference even that someone puts for you. Sometimes it's asking someone for a review that you can then forward on to somebody else for business. So I think, mm-hmm. I do think social media has definitely skewed the way we market ourselves. Most but definitely. it also is the biggest place where a lot of people are trying to figure out, like with everything, they want to systematise everything or find right. ways to hack it or find ways to... Yeah. Chick, like trick the system because everybody knows how to do these kind of things i mean we are we even get pulled into that space as well mm-hmm. and i think it's especially with social media it's just being aware enough to know that 
it's hard, isn't it? Because how do you say, are you doing it authentically? Or are you doing it? Because I guess you need to have I think some... you know. I think you know. Really. Deep down. If you really question it, every bit of content you put out, kind of like in that uh, blog post you did about Facebook, mm-hmm. and whether or not Facebook should ask us why we're posting each status update. In fact, I think that's a perfectly apt <laughs> uh, blog post to go check out, so we should probably put a link in. Um but yeah, it's, I think if you really, each bit of content you put out, whether that is a, a blog post, whether it's a video, whether it's um, just a status update or a tweet or whatever, if you really dig down as to why you're putting it out there, you know whether or not you're putting it out there. Like, there have been occasions where I've felt genuinely grateful for the support that I get, and I'll put a tweet out and I'll say, I'm really actually feeling really grateful today. Mm-hmm. And then there are other days where I think... Actually, I haven't actually said thank you to my audience recently, so I should probably do that. Mm-hmm. And the the difference in how I feel when I'm posting one or the other is huge because one's coming from a place of complete authenticity where I am genuinely grateful, and then there are others where it's coming from a place where it's like, I'm doing it because I feel like it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I see that a lot of other people are doing this. So yeah, maybe I and that doesn't do mean that it doesn't mean that I'm trying to be manipulative from it, but it's kind of going yeah, I haven't done that for a while and it's something that I've been told that I need to do. Uh So I should probably do it and just express some gratitude Mm -hmm. as an example. But I think if I really dig down, the reason one for the first one is I genuinely feel grateful and I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And the second version is not because I really want to say thank you. I mean, yes, I do, but it's because I'm going, well, that's a box ticked. And the, the difference in your gut, you can feel it. Good stuff. <laughs> so next time I put out a tweet or anything saying thank you, just try and gauge for yourself which, yeah. which side of the fence I'm sitting that day. I do also think a lot of it depends on the person viewing that as well. So yes, a lot of depending so. on the person very who's so. actually viewing, it depends where they're at, whether they can see through the bullshit. Because I think a lot of the time these markets get away with so much shit because a lot of people do not see... The, the kind of trickery that's underneath mm-hmm. it and so that's why they do it because they realise there's still some people out there that are mm-hmm. gullible enough to fall for this mm-hmm. it's like with that whole McDonald's thing they do these adverts where it's all around family and friendships and at the end they show a burger you're like well I see what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> So I see, I'm going to take my children and turn them into a burger? Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying so it's kind of like they use these little tricky, tricky sort of methods to kind of like br- brand their kind of uh, service around this idea that oh, what mcdonald's brings families together or friends together and it's yeah i'm just not a big fan of that sort does mcdonald's not bring your family together don't do mcdonald's does not happen i used to love it when my nan used to take us out shopping she used to be like i'll treat you today i'll have a mcdonald's no mine was wimpy <laughs> wimpy <laughs> yes I don't ever had a wimpy anyway um so yeah but i i think you're right in that it does so much depend on on the audience and whether or not they can see it, as you kind of said it, the trickery. And I think this is the thing as well. If you know that you are actively doing stuff because trickery, Mm -hmm. rather than because you want to deliver to your audience, I think that's, that's the real, the real thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning how to write good copy, for example, Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are, let's say, tweaking how you would describe your product because it makes good copy do you get what i'm saying then i think you're shifting the goalposts in order to achieve a certain amount of success as opposed to because it's the value i do you kind of see what i'm saying i I, I think it's hard i think it's so hard nowadays it's a fine line it is such a fine line i think because that whole authenticity buzzword is there then also you've got these whole methods of marketing it's kind of like how do you know what you should and shouldn't say or how you mm-hmm. do it. And I think it is a very tough one nowadays. And I do think that, yeah, I think often it is, it's like when I write a blog post, I do write it for me. It's something that I kind of want to do because I just want to get it out there. When I'm writing, I don't actually have in mind what I hope that person, I don't know, it's such a hard one really with this whole promoting yourself. But actually, now that I've actually opened up the can of worms, it's kind of like, well, actually I do market in. But at the same time, I think, like, hopefully I come across authentic. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, how much of that are you tweaking based on your current experiences uh-huh. of everything that right. everybody else does? Right. So it is a tough one, I think. And, and and we know that the platforms are changed. Like, now Snapchat is that the most authentic version of you because it's a 
It's a different platform. And, yeah, until people know how to start gaming Snapchat. Yeah, exactly. You know, the thing about Snapchat is it's all very authentic and it's all very like behind the scenes kind yeah, of yeah. stuff, and that's why it's got value for people. But as soon as people start going, well, I mean, I'm starting to see it now. We see essentially these scripted Snapchat stories that are happening. Mm where people are kind of offering their advice or there are certain people I do follow on Snapchat, unfortunately, that do annoy me a little bit because it's like, now I feel like you're delivering to me a blog post over Snapchat. Uh-huh. Well, again, market has ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we're going to take a quick <laughs> break on that bombshell. Uh, we're going to thank our sponsors. Please stick around because they really do help support the show. So we'll be back in a moment. We need to thank our sponsor, the University of Northampton. These guys have been great to us and great to you because them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this, right? Yep. Right? So uh, the University of Northampton uh, specialise in social enterprise. So they're all about degrees, obviously, because that's what unis do, but they're also very, very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses, particularly in the social enterprise space, which is all about business doing social good. So if you're thinking, yeah, I want a degree, but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend, we highly recommend, as alumni, that you check them out. So head over to northampton.ac.uk. All the information is there, and we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show. So, guys, this is super cool. It is. This I'm is quite exciting. super cool. So we're going to talk briefly about New Media Europe, Mm-hmm. New Media Expo coming to London. And guess who's going? Dan freaking Miller. We are. Oh, well, Dan Miller as well. Dan Miller Dan as Miller's well. Dan Miller's going to be there as well. <laughs> See, I thought you were going for the Dan Miller thing, but I mean, we're going as well, which is equally cool. Can I say more cool? Dan mm. Miller's not listening. <laughs> cool. But Dan Miller actually is one of the first podcasters I listen to in this sort of space. Me too. So I'm really excited. Uh, but yeah, we're going. We're going to be there. On a pal. Mm. And many. I think we're allowed to say that, right? I think so. Well, if we weren't allowed to say it, we're sorry. But <laughs> we're we're going to be, be on a panel. We're going to be there uh, making the powerful nonsense presence felt. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. But we want you to come. We want you to come. Please join please. us. Uh, so, if you want to get some tickets. Oh, also, hang on. Should we just Let tell them what it's about? Tell what it's about, because no, I missed that. <laughs> we'll get to tickets in a minute. Or maybe it's just enough to sell it that we're going. We're going. Well, that's what <laughs> I was kind of assuming. No, no. So, if you don't know what New Media Expo is, it's basically like the hub, the big conference of all like the media creators, like YouTubers, podcasters, um, digital all coming together. media innovators using technology in right. amazing ways. Exactly. So it's all about that production of content in this new media world that we live in where social media is everywhere, everyone's on social media, everyone's got a blog or a vlog or a podcast and and kind of it's all that gathering of people getting some great, great value on how that you how you can develop your uh, passions through your business, media. whether you're an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, it's it's so good. It's going to be so good. I'm so <laughs> excited. Um, so, if it sounds like something that you think you might want to come along to, if you're looking to enter into YouTube, podcasting, anything like that, we can, we can, we can get tickets. They're mm-hmm. still available. So, if you want them, you can head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash N-M-E-U. Yes, we'll put it on the screen. Okay, right. <laughs> N-M November Mother. Mother. Echo. Is it mother? Echo. Umbrella. That'll do. <laughs> it's Mike. It's Mike. Mike. November Mike Echo. Uniform. Uniform. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash N-M-E-U. All ticket information's there. You can buy your tickets there. It's going to be so good. I'm and so just, excited. As well, just to think about a networking opportunity that's going to be available there. There's mm-hmm. going to be so many people, so many people in the same, who are like-minded like yep. us, who are creative people. So I think it's a great opportunity and we'd love you to join us. And also, there's actually an early bird offer going on now so you can actually get your tickets discounted to get in there fast. Yes. Well said, Jim. Well said. Talking about new media? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Back to the show. Welcome back. We've got ourselves in the right pickle. <laughs> we have got ourselves in a pickle. We've gone on... I'm now so many con- different rabbit holes that now, now we're questioning. I am own, questioning myself properly on this our one. Own. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So I'm gonna, if I may, 
open with what I was just talking to you about in our break? I think so. Okay, so I mentioned my friend's podcast at the beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. and he mentioned about how uh, the social media that we're using and all that self-promotion is great, but is it a huge distraction? Is it a huge distraction from actually doing what really matters, where you really can deliver the value of building your craft, making yourself better at what you do, and letting the promotion come to you, and then leveraging that promotion when it does get there? Are you sh- like, So should you be trying to get the ball rolling with the promotion, or should you instead just be focusing on being bloody good at what you do, and then not worry so much about the self-promotion, let, let your craft and your work speak for you. It's a really tough balance because I think, let's just use an example of someone like, say Sully Breaks that we've had on before. If you're a poet and you're writing poems and then you get really great at writing poems, but then you decide never to make a YouTube video to share it, you decide never to create a shareable image and put it out there, then suddenly it's kind of like, I guess... But, if- then, but then I think in that instance, you're doing, you're doing your audience a disservice, right? Because... Because you're not making your value available to them. Because oh, you're saying because the product is what you've honed and you're putting out the product, whereas yeah. if he was doing like a blog post based on how to write a poem to promote his own poem. Right, exactly. Right. Because if he, if he, <laughs> if he is writing a poem... Yeah. Sorry, Sully, we're using you as a case study here. Um, so if uh, he's writing a poem, right, and it's a great poem, he's put loads of work and effort into it, right, and... He's got the choice. He can either put a YouTube video out of that poem, mm-hmm. right? Or instead, he could maybe write a blog post about how he wrote this great poem that yeah. nobody can see, right? Yeah. What I'm asking is, is that putting the YouTube out, YouTube video out of the poem, is that just... An extension of the actual ex- product itself. Right, or is it just self-promotion for the sake of self-promotion? What I'm saying is, if he puts that video out, that's him providing the value to the audience, Right. By making it accessible, basically. Yeah. Okay. And he's actually doing his audience a disservice by not putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because at I'm least saying. they get access to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the actual... But then I so think... So I was riding on the coattails of your point. <laughs> Which I can't quite remember. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, I guess, like you say, if, if it's a company or someone doing a service, they kind of have to put stuff out there in a way that, I mean, it's like showing that, hey, we're over here and these uh-huh. platforms are available. And often, yeah, you might be an artist and create a poem, but then you need to use the channels that are likely to get people to see what you do. It's the same reason we decided to put the podcast onto YouTube is to make it accessible. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I kind of... It is self-promotion. I guess it is... Oh, it's a really tough one. This one's really got me in a pickle. <laughs> when, when we went on the break, Jen was like, I don't know, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really, really tough one. I just because I think it's... we've got a really interesting debate going here now with ourselves, where we're now questioning our own previous beliefs before we came into the episode, which is what I love about us doing this podcast <laughs> anyway, because it challenges ourselves just as much as like we try to challenge you guys. Um, okay, let me go on a different tangent then. Yes. Okay. I need something to um, cling on to. <laughs> so again, and I'm sorry, Michael Bot, mate. But I'm stealing a lot of your stuff here because it's really fresh food for thought. Should we just send everybody to that episode? Yeah, honestly, instead. I think we should link it up because <laughs> it's it's very heavily on actors, but I think it applies to so many other people. And I've messaged him to say, wow, you've really changed my thought on this because I've been thinking about it as well. Mm-hmm. Where he says with actors, um, and I think this is so much for like entrepreneurs and everything as well, I think it's so true in the world that we live in right now, is not only now are we actually wanting to succeed as a society but with social media as well what actually seems to be more important to us now is not necessarily succeeding itself but actually being seen to succeed interesting and so social media seems to now becoming a be becoming a platform for people to show everybody else how successful they are and, and and this is where I'm drawing the line between self good self promotion and self promoting like a dick, um, <laughs> yeah. because I feel like the people that are good at the self promotion mm-hmm. aren't self promoting in a way of look how successful I am. Uh, they're actually promoting in a way of this value first. What can I do to make not necessarily your life better or anyone else's life, but just 
make things generally better in Just, some way. Whereas I think then the the promoters like a dick are the people that Gary Vee talks about where they hire a really expensive car for the day and then take selfies in front of that car and and go, look at this amazing car that I've been driving around today, which then makes people go, oh, shit, he must have some money in the bank. Yeah, but this is like, this is a really good conversation, actually, now, because I remember I was actually going to write a blog post recently. It was, it was, called, it was going to be called Show Me the Lambo. And it was this idea that... <laughs> I really like that title. And it was this idea... Please I- write it. <laughs> it was this idea that actually... Is that not a good marker who kind of meets people where their current mind frame is at? So like Ty Lopez is, we've all seen his video where he's mm-hmm. like, I'm here in my car. And then you see the Lamborghini in the background. And then if you watch that initially, the first thought you think is, wow, this guy's loaded. He's got a Lambo. And then actually, if you listen longer, you realize actually he accredits his wealth to all the books he's read. And that's part mm-hmm. of his, his business is actually sharing this knowledge. Right. And I think sometimes you've got to think that maybe when you are promoting yourself, maybe it is meeting people at their expectations. So if you are like a, if you are like a personal trainer or a health person, uh-huh. do you put out the video with the ripped abs and then to get them in and then you, then you show who you are. Right. But only if you have really good ripped abs and it's not just because you've starved yourself for a week to make sure that you've got that photo ready to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then uh, isn't that, isn't that what because every, every model does that? A model will get into a particular shape for a photo shoot and then right. they... Right, okay, right. But, <laughs> but, okay, no, that's fair. That's a fair point. But, but with the model, as yes. an example, the, the, the job of the model, in my opinion, is to look good for whatever they're modelling for, right? Mm-hmm. So that's their job, right? The job of a personal trainer is not to look good on their Instagram. But yeah, you would want to be trained by but someone of who course, looks good. Of course, you do want to be trained by somebody that looks good, but... And is that is but, that being... But I think you should sell them... I mean, because any personal trainer that's good at what they do is going to look good, right? Yeah. But it's the personal trainers that might for example, starve themselves or steroids or whatever to make themselves look better for a photo shoot for self-promotion, then are we crossing the line into dick promotion because you're actually selling people a falsehood? Mm. Whereas actually if you worked on your craft, if you worked on your craft as a personal trainer, you know your shit so you're going to look good because your craft is good, is that going to speak for itself rather than having to do these tricks that we've talked about? I think I've had a slight epiphany. (gasps) <gasps> okay. a slight one and i think the difference here is the whole idea of if you show them the lambo you do the the rigid diet you starve yourself i think what really that is in terms of self-promotion and being a dick is that you want it quick it yes. skips and i think this is the yes. difference nowadays i think i think authenticity comes with resilience and perseverance but it's a longer term game because mm-hmm. I think the person who's coming from an authentic place yeah. is actually going to do it for five years or six years or seven yeah. years. Whereas the person who's doing it, who kind of wants to get that quick fix, will it work? Will it won't work? Will I get that six figure salary? They are the ones who are probably trying the hacks to make it as fast as possible to get the result. Right. And so maybe self-promotion as a dick <laughs> <laughs> is actually focusing on the short game, the quick win. Whereas I yeah. think the authenticity and actually self-promoting is because actually this is something I value. This is me as a person. Right. And so what is produced is something that is sustained right. at a certain standard mm-hmm. and improves. And maybe that might be the difference. Right. I mean, if you look, <laughs> if you look at a uh, recent example of popping into my head, again, I'm an actor, I'm sorry, uh, but Leo <laughs> DiCaprio, mm-hmm. right? Bloody good actor. Amazing actor. Everybody's wanted him to have an Oscar for ages, right? How many times did he go on and on and on about winning his Oscar? Not much. Did Instead, he, he focused <laughs> on, I want people, I want to use this platform for people to think about the environment. Mm-hmm. And that's good self-promotion, in my opinion. That's proper self-promotion because you're, you've are you let your craft speak for itself, you're uh, expressing your values. Whereas, let's say, somebody that doesn't feel like they've earned it or have got that quick win for example, they might have some credibility issues and there's nothing wrong with that at all. We're just looking at purely what is good self-promotion, what's not good self-promotion. So Mm -hmm. I'm not judging anybody here at all, (laughs) right? But the people that are then posting all over social media for the next 12 months about this Oscar that they've won Mm -hmm. or any acting award that they've won, Mm -hmm. it then becomes, it then becomes about them and not about their craft or about 
what they deliver, for example. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, think- I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with having that, that moment where you go, I'm so fucking proud that yeah. I've achieved whatever it is that you've achieved. Yeah. But then when that gets posted out every four weeks because you go, oh, it's been one month since that day. It's yeah. been two months since that day. Maybe that goes back to the whole, um, again, that long term, short term, but also that abundance and scarcity. Yeah, I think it's that's like a lot to do maybe with you're it. So tying onto that moment, and that you think, well, that's never going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think maybe that long term vision is kind of you see it's a journey, you see it's a progress, uh-huh. and so you kind of bring people along, yeah, with you rather uh-huh. than, well, this is the only thing you should care about. Here's my world, here's my Lambo, right. here's my money, here's right. me chucking <laughs> money on the bed on Instagram, <laughs> whatever it is. But yeah, I do think it is a tough one. I think, I think the world today does demand that we are on all these channels it does make yes. us have to you be available there be really. it is where the attention is it's yeah. where the opportunity lies it's the reason we can make a podcast and put it onto youtube and in, onto itunes and people will find us and we'll connect with people mm-hmm. we've never had contact with before but i do think it is really questioning the reason behind doing stuff and maybe that is that awareness and really yeah. yeah, questioning, are you doing it for the result? I guess we did mention right. that in the um, Silly Breaks episode as well, the idea of... Are, are you... you changing what you're doing for a particular result rather than just doing it because it feels right? Because it's you, it's a stream yeah. of you. Is This is just what I would do, and these are just me showing myself. Yeah. This isn't me edited, this isn't me mm-hmm. <laughs> makeup, this isn't me... As an example, there was the Gary V episode where he had the YouTube influence definitely worth a watch if you're on YouTube it was a great episode and actually they were the the one girl that was on there from Skinny Confidential uh, she was saying that um, actually one of the worst things she ever did was she got approached by a company to promote a product because her following was so good but that company scripted the whole thing yeah they totally edited her out they yeah. just wanted her face yeah. face and her brand exactly yeah, yeah. and that was I mean it wasn't self promotion for her thankfully but it, you know, if you apply that methodology to your self promotion, which so many people do, they take a blueprint of what makes a good this, what makes a good that, and then they try and apply it. You okay. then start. I mean, for example, there are so many things that we probably shouldn't be doing that we do when we're producing our podcasts. Like, <laughs> like scratch my notes. Our <laughs> <laughs> like our notes are by no means you know, really detailed notes. We just have a very general kind of idea of what we want to talk about. But the reason we do that is because we like the authentic flow. But so many people are like, oh, no, you really should make sure you've got really detailed or notes. Or chop out stuff. that bit where you said that or edit that down. Right. Or maybe you didn't come across in a certain but way. But we don't want to do that because we don't want to change who we are because of it will be a better podcast. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that sort of thing, as you say. So is it, essentially, are you selling out or are you just doing you? You. Exactly. Good place to end, I think. I feel feel like... And good timing, too. Excellent. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I, that was a really interesting episode. Really tough one, actually. Really went in a very different direction to where I was expecting it to, and that's <laughs> great. It's brilliant. Um, if you have any thoughts, because I think this is a really interesting mm. debate, particularly for this day and age where social media is so everywhere, um, please leave a comment, email us, tweet us. Um, you can email me at wayne at powerfulnonsense.com or gem at gem at powerfulnonsense.com. That's C-E-M. Um, or hit us up on Twitter. Leave a comment in the YouTube video. We, honestly, I'd really love to get a good, really good conversation going. I think this. I'm going to look back at this and be like, uh, maybe gem that isn't right here and there. But yeah, I guess well, that's I mean, part I'm of guilty the... of so many stuff that we've said <laughs> that you shouldn't probably shouldn't do. Yeah. And I think everybody is. We all mm-hmm. have, have those moments. But yeah, I think it's a really, really interesting debate, which I think is going to really start coming into mainstream very soon Mm -hmm. about the narcissism of society (laughs) well i think it already is and and i do think the generations are getting better and better at seeing through the bs and yeah it's it's the reason why that whole tesco thing as soon as they put that farm out there somebody wrote an article saying i called up those farms they don't exist (laughs) or i called them up and that's not the one so i mean i need to look because i only saw the headline so i really need to look. we'll link up to it for sure Uh, Great. So thanks very much, guys. Please hit those subscribe buttons, give us thumbs up and reviews, and we will love you forever. Thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you next time. See you later.